Hello to all of our um, incoming professional MBA students. And my name is Kate Hoban. I am the academic advisor for our professional MBA Flex and online programs. And so I am going to share some information with you about the programs in this presentation. If you need access to this presentation or would like access to this, please feel free to send me an email. Let's go ahead and get started with talking about the degree as a whole. So First things first, the MBA does have 32 semester credit hours of core classes. I've listed them all on the screen. Um, I'm not going to go through each one because you can read them on the screen there. And um, of course, you can also look up the degree plan in the graduate catalog or on our website. And um, really the only thing that I want to call out here on this page or a couple of things I want to call out on this page is that for your IMS core requirement. This is a flexible core, so you have four options of classes that you can take. So I've listed them there on the screen and um, any one of those four will fulfill the core requirement. If you did want to take more than one of those classes, one of them will fulfill the core requirement and then the other can count as an elective class. And um, the other thing that I'd like to call out on this page is to be aware of pre or co-requisites. Some classes have prerequisites or co-requisites that you need to make sure that you meet in order to take those specific classes. Those are listed in the course description. And so if you view the um, course description in the graduate catalog or on Coursebook or really anywhere um, where you can find the course description, the pre and co requisites will be listed there. So just make sure that you keep that in mind as you're scheduling out your classes um, and don't forget to meet a prerequisite or something like that and have to delay your graduation because of that. The MBA also consists of um, 21 credit hours of elective classes. And so this is where you can really personalize your degree in terms of what you are looking for. Um, with your elective classes. And so concentrations for our degree, concentrations really are awarded by taking nine to 12 credit hours, elective credit hours within a single area. So I've listed here on the screen, all the different areas that you can take electives under, really as long as the class is a graduate level class that's offered within the Jindal School of Management, it will count as an elective for the program. And so if you're interested in, like I said, a certain concentration, if you take nine to 12 credit hours or three to four classes within a certain area for your electives, that gives you kind of the concentration in that area. Um, you are limited to 12 elective credit hours in a single prefix area. Some courses are cross-listed, meaning they may be offered under multiple different prefixes. And so, you know, there may be a course that's a business analytics course that's cross-listed with an IT management class um, code as well. So cross-listed classes do not count, but if they are just specific to a certain prefix, you are limited to 12 credit hours with that. Really, the main reason for that is we want you to diversify your degree um, and make sure that you're you know, getting the most out of your degree that you can. More information about concentration. So like I said, um, concentrations are established by taking nine to 12 elective credit hours in a single functional area. And so if you want you know, a marketing concentration, taking nine to 12 MKT courses will give you um, the concentration in that area. There is no formal declaration process. Um, so this is nothing you know, official. It's just automatic once you complete the credit hours in the concentration area. Um, and I will mention as well that um, this is not a formal or official process, like I mentioned. Um, it's not going, or your concentration is not going to be listed on your degree or your diploma or transcript or anything like that. Our concentrations really are more for you to be able to market yourself on your resume, on your LinkedIn, while you're networking and those things um, so that you can use your MBA and your concentration as you need to. Um, a few resources for helping you choose a concentration if you're unsure of, you know, what kind of you want to pursue. Of course, you can review the course offerings in each concentration area to see what's relevant to either your current career or the career that you plan to pursue. Um, you can also talk with a team member of our team um, or one of the MS program directors for, you know, kind of more guidance on what classes may be helpful to what you're hoping to get out of your MBA degree. Um, and then also faculty members are happy to discuss, you know, other classes within their area, things like that. And then alumni, of course, um, are helpful or can be helpful as well. 
really it's all about keeping the end in mind. How are you marketing your MBA for your dream job or you know the career that you plan to pursue in the future? Academic certificates can add value. Um, we do partner with the executive education department um, in order to um, offer some certificates. There are also some certificates that are offered just through the Jindal School of Management. Different MS programs have some certificates as well. So I have listed a few of them on the screen, um, but really this is just a way for you to um, get elective credit. So most certificates require you to take four classes or 12 credit hours. So you can get, you know, 12 credits of electives by taking these certificate classes at the same time as, um, you know, getting the academic certificate once you complete the classes. And so that is an option for our MBA students. If this is something that you are interested in pursuing, I would say reach out to myself and your advisor to kind of get more information. Um, and then you will also need to apply to the certificate program. And so I'm happy to help answer any questions that you may have about that. Um, and then I will also just mention a little disclaimer at the bottom um, for some of the certificates that are offered through the executive education department. And um, the tuition and fees may differ. So just be aware of that as you're kind of making your plans for your degree. There are some other ways to obtain elective credit. And so one of the ways that some students choose is an independent study. This is not something that the MBA office facilitates, but if you take a class with a faculty member or connect with a faculty member on you know, some research that they're doing or some type of project that you'd like to work on with that faculty member, you are able to do an independent study for credit. So this is limited to three credit hours. Um, and the faculty member does need to be a full-time faculty member. So not an adjunct, but a full-time um, faculty member to sponsor the project. Um, there is an approval process. And so if this is something that you're interested in, again, please reach out to your advisor for more information about that. But that is an option that you have to get elective credits. Um, the MBA program also takes an international trip. This is typically in the spring semester. Um, and so you are able to, if you would like to, attend the international trip. Um, most of the time, you're going to be able to choose anywhere from one to three credit hours, depending on your program needs. Um, you do need to apply for the trip through the Comets Abroad portal and be accepted into the trip. Um, and then for the trip, you do pay tuition still on the number of credit hours that you choose, as well as, you know, trip fees and everything that comes with that. Um, just to kind of give you an insight on where our students have gone, um, Stockholm, Sweden is where the students will be going in May 2024. And then last year, the students went to Dublin, Ireland in March. So um, more information will come about future trips. But that, again, is an option that you have. Um, great way to, you know, have some fun learn a lot and get elective credit. Students are also able to work an internship for elective credit. Now, this is not a requirement for the MBA degree. It is a requirement for some of the other MS degrees, but it is not required for the MBA degree. But if you do decide to you know, apply for and secure an internship during your time in the MBA program, this is a great way to work, gain experience, and also earn elective credit. Um, again, you're able to choose from one to three credit hours, just depending on your needs. If you're ever unsure of how many credit hours you should be taking the class for, again, feel free to reach out to your advisor for guidance on that. Um, international students are eligible for an internship after two long semesters in the U.S., so long semesters being fall and spring. Um, and you do need to take your internship for course credit per the CPT guidelines. So um, it has to be one of the classes that you take and be getting, you know, credit for for that. Um, there is more information about internships on the um, JSON website. So I've you know linked it here, but of course, um, if you need, again, this PowerPoint or links or anything, please feel free to reach out. Um, MBA and MS students, so if you're doing a dual degree, you may complete a maximum of six internship credit hours. And so, you know, three credits for the MS program and three credits for the MBA. Uh, if you have a continuing internship or work multiple internships, again, great way to get some elective credit. For our students that are working full time, um, we do have an in-company internship opportunity. Um, again, not required for the MBA degree. It is three credit hours. Uh, and so it's one credit hour in the fall semester and two credit hours in the spring semester. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, we will send out more information when it comes, you know, closer to the time to apply for that. Um, 
and register in the class, but please feel free to reach out if you have questions about that. We do have, like I mentioned um, a moment ago, some double degree opportunities. So a lot of students or several students choose to add on an MS degree to the MBA for the following reasons. Um, they may be applying for jobs in a more technical field where they don't necessarily have the background or prior education. And um, so, you know, if you have an education degree and you're hoping to get into analytics, it may be a good idea to add on the MS degree to help you get more of that technical knowledge. Um, for my international students as well, if you need or would like the STEM OPT extension, um, then the MBA is not a STEM designated degree. Some of our other MS degrees or most of our other MS degrees are STEM designated. And so that is, is an option for you to get the, the extension um, upon your graduation. Adding on a secondary degree just because it's a good deal is not necessarily a good use of your time or resources. If you already work in the analytics area, if you're interested in continuing in that area, you probably don't need, you know, the, the additional MS degree. Um, so that's just some reasons why students may choose that. And um, there are several different MS degree options offered within the School of Management. So if you would like more information on that, please feel free to reach out to either myself or the MS program directors to get more um, information. For the double degree, um, it is a 63 credit hours minimum total for both degrees. And so, you know, that is a better deal than 36 credit hours for the master's degree up plus 53 for the MBA. So it's just 63, typically 65 for most students credit hours total for both degrees. Um, 27 hours of the classes that you take must be unique to the MBA. Um, again, if you do choose to pursue the dual degree option, this is just something that you will work with both myself and the graduate advising office to make sure you're meeting the requirements for both degrees. The MBA programs office can help. So once you begin the program, um, you will start receiving our Monday weekly email. And so this email is going to be um, basically highlighting all the important announcements, deadlines, and program events for the week. Um, it is sent to your university email address on Monday afternoons when courses are in session. And so um, I would highly encourage all of you to, once you begin classes, um, be checking your Monday email or be checking your email every Monday afternoon for that. Read through that. Um, of course, we also have our events listed on the MBA events page. So that's a resource for you as well. And then um, you are able to um, reach out to our office, reach out to myself for guidance regarding all of the things on the screen. So classes and registration, concentrations, adding an MS degree, faculty or class issues, any of those things we are happy to help with whatever, um, whatever assistance you need. MBA Academic Advising, so here is my information. Um, I do have, um, I'm available via email, I'm available via phone, and you're also able to book an advising appointment with me. Uh, typically, you know, if you have a quick question, email or phone is absolutely fine, but if you'd like to have a longer discussion, I would encourage you to reach out um, to schedule an appointment. Um, great, some great tips to be involved in the advising process um, is be prepared to discuss your goals and educational plans during the meeting. Um, if you have, you know, your list of questions or your list of information that you're trying to find, that's great. Um, of course, yeah, bringing questions and necessary materials to meetings, kind of doing a little bit of pre-work so that you are prepared for the meeting. Um, and then also being open to suggestions from your advisor. If you, you know, are planning to take a very heavy course load, you know, maybe being open to some changes to that or something like that. Um, if you book an appointment with me, it will automatically schedule as a Microsoft Teams meeting. But if I am in the office that day, um, please feel free to come in person. Um, if you have a quick question as well, if you're on campus, feel free to pop into my office. If I'm not busy, I'm, I'm happy to answer answer any questions that as well. Um, and then if there are any questions that you have that are just general MBA questions, that um, 5055 number is for just our hotline. So if there's anything general that you need, um, that that's available as well. So our office hours are Monday through Thursday from 8 to 530 and then Friday from 8 to 5. And our location is in the JSON 2.210. This is there's a study lounge and then our offices are down the hallway in that uh, room as well. So please feel free to stop by when you're able. 
The Career Management Center is also a great resource for you for all things career related. So I am your advisor for all things academic related. Um, if you have career related questions, um, resume, mock interviews, all of those things um, the Career Management Center can help with. So um, they have asked our students to fill out um, kind of a career survey detailing you know what your needs are and what you're looking for in terms of the assistance that the CMC can provide. So please feel free um, to fill that out as you're able. Um, the CMC also is the department where all the internship approvals and things go through. So if you have um, questions about you know logistics of internships, then you can reach out to them as well. Um, and I did put a note on the screen for my international students. It is highly recommended that you take um, the professional development class um, in you know, your first or second semester in the program. Uh, so the class code for that is MAS 6102. And um, at this time, I will have to register you for that class. And so uh, please email me for assistance with registering for that course if that's something that you're interested in. Um, it kind of just goes through um, resume building, networking skills, interview skills, and things like that for students that may be new to the U.S. It's also a prerequisite for um, all of the MS degrees. So if you are planning on completing the dual MBA and MS degree, you'll have to take that class anyways. So um, if you're again, if you're interested, please email me for, for registration in that. Future registration. So the registrar will assign an enrollment appointment, which will appear in Galaxy or Orion to let you know what day that you can register. Um, I did kind of Incur or would encourage you to look at the uh, summer or fall 2024 academic calendars um, for the dates on when the schedule is going to be released, when registration will open, all the registration deadlines, when it ends, when late registration period is, and all of that. So um, please look at the academic calendar for all of those dates. Um, you will need to register for courses in, or in your Orion Student Center. Um, so just make sure that you are, you know, getting that done as soon as registration opens for each semester. Um, we, our office never recommends to wait until, you know, a month before classes start or something like that. We recommend registering as soon as you're able, so make sure to get that done. Um, of course, if you have any issues with registration or you're receiving error messages or anything like that, um, you can send a registration request from your UT Dallas email account if you need any kind of help. Um, again, if you're receiving like an error message or something like that, screenshots are super helpful. Um, if you want to be registered in a certain section, make sure that you just provide all of that specific information so that we can assist and help in the best way possible. Um, on the general JSOM advising webpage, they do have some videos that kind of help walk through registration. So, you know, if this is your first time or if you forget, um, those videos can be super helpful with figuring out how to actually go through the registration process. Um, the course book website is also a really great tool to help you kind of view all of the information about the classes. And so each semester, once the schedule comes out, the entire schedule will be viewable through Coursebook as well as through um, Orion. But Coursebook is, um, for a lot of our students, kind of an easier to use resource. Um, so the course schedule will be there specific to each semester. There will also be course evaluations and past syllabi if you go back to a previous semester. Um, and all the details are available in Coursebook as well. So that's a great resource for you um, once the schedule comes out to view the offerings to reading the graduate catalog. So um, of course you can access the graduate catalog at any time. This is a great resource to see the MBA degree plan, course descriptions, grading policies, and all of that. So um, just a couple tips, make sure to pay attention to cross-listed courses. I know I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the presentation. So some classes um, are offered under multiple different prefixes. Um, so for example, OB6301, which is one of our MBA core classes, is cross-listed with SYSM6333. So you'll see that in the graduate catalog. It'll have the course code and then it'll have the other course code in the parentheses. That means that it's cross-listed. Um, and again, those do not count towards your 12 credit hour rule for electives. And so um, just keep that in mind if you're hoping to take, you know, a fifth class within a certain area, as long as one of your classes is cross-listed, that is completely fine. Um, I will also mention that if you do need to get on the wait list for a class, the wait list will only be under one of the prefixes. Um, so just be aware of that. 
Prerequisites and co-requisites will be listed in the graduate catalog as well. That kind of tells you and helps you figure out what order the courses must be taken in. Um, prerequisite courses must be taken before you can take a certain class. Co-requisite classes can be taken before or at the same time. Um, when you're looking at the classes, there is also kind of a key. There will be an S, a Y, a T, or an R after each kind of class description. So uh, I've listed on the screen what that means. If there's an S, it's offered at least once a year um, during the long semesters, again, fall and spring. Um, the Y means once a year, T means at least once every two years, and then the R is just based on student interest and instructor availability. Um, if there's a course that you see in the graduate catalog that you don't see once the schedule is released or something like that, um, I would say just keep an eye on it for future semesters. There are some courses that are listed in the graduate catalog that haven't been offered in a very long time, so we don't necessarily know when those classes will be offered again. Um, but please feel free to reach out if you see a class in the graduate catalog that you're interested in taking but don't see it on the schedule. Uh, please feel free to reach out to you know, your advisor or the program that that class is under for more information. Don't get caught cheating. So academic honesty or academic integrity is a really big part of being a graduate student. Um, we have students occasionally get sanctioned for any type of academic dishonesty. So cheating, plagiarism, collusion, all of those things are things that, you know, we do not want our students participating in. Um, so, you know, some examples, downloading text from the internet and then not citing those things, citing to false references or findings in research or other academic exercises, um, just all things like that. We don't want our students, you know, having to have repercussions for any type of academic dishonesty. So just be aware, uh, make sure that you read through the academic dishonesty policy lack of knowledge is not a valid reason for dismissal in a judicial affairs case. So just because you didn't know that something was wrong um, with what you, you know, may have submitted or had done on your exam, that doesn't, that's not an excuse for, for academic dishonesty. So you are required to understand and abide by all the academic integrity rules and procedures. Um, if you need any assistance, the JSOM Writing Lab or your professor can help with, um, you know, citing or citations or anything like that. So please feel free to reach out if you need any help or have any questions. It's better to reach out and get an answer than just submit your assignment um, and then, you know, maybe had done something wrong. So be aware of that. Um, how to get to graduation. Of course, the main thing is to show up to class and participate. Um, it's very important to attend class and make sure that you, you know, complete all your assignments, do well on all your exams and all of those things. Um, the GPA requirements, this is also something to be aware of. You do need to maintain at least a 3.0 or above um, for your MBA core classes, for your cumulative degree, so as a whole, and um, also for your degree GPA. So if you're completing a dual degree, you need at least 3.0 for all of the classes that are counting towards the MBA degree as well. Um, academic probation, just a little bit of information about that. If your cumulative GPA does go below 3.0, um, you are allowed three semesters total, so three semesters in a row on academic probation before dismissal from the university. Um, academic probation does potentially put financial aid or scholarships in jeopardy. So um, just be aware of that, you know, make sure that you're doing the very best that you can in all of your classes. Um, Students are not allowed to do an internship for credit or attend an international trip while on academic probation, um, and this will also delay registration for future semesters. So um, again, please do the very best that you can in all of your classes. If this you know, does happen, worst case scenario, you'll have to work with myself or your advisor um, in terms of you know, choosing what classes to take next, registering for those classes, again, at a delayed time. Um, so do the very best you can in your classes. Hopefully it will not be an issue, but um, worst case scenario, if you do get on academic probation, you can recover, but there are certain repercussions for that. Um, course repeats. If for some reason you do need to repeat a course, if you either fail a course or if you get a lower grade and need to repeat that course for your GPA or just for your own personal preferences, um, graduate students may repeat up to three courses one time each. So just keep that in mind. You do not have unlimited repeats. Three courses, one time each. That's what our students are allowed throughout their time in or as a graduate student. 
Uh, make sure you finish in time. The courses expire after 72 months from the month that you or semester that you begin taking them. So just be aware of that timeline. Um, 72 months is roughly equal to six years. I know that that seems like a long time, but there are students that tend to stretch their degree out. Um, so just make sure that you complete within the 72 months. Um, and then, of course, again, a reminder, um, do not take more than 12 elective credit hours in one functional area. And um, that's something that your advisor will track as well as um, you making sure that you are you know, not taking too many electives in one area. Um, and then my orange box there, just as a reminder, if you are pursuing a double degree, um, you do need to meet a minimum of 63 credit hours to graduate. I would say that most students finish in 65 credit hours just due to uh, most of our classes being three credit hour classes. Um, and then 27 to 29 typically of your credit hours must be unique to the MBA. Again, that's something that you'll work with your MBA and MS advisor with to ensure you're meeting those requirements. Um, getting involved, this is a great way as a graduate student to feel more connected to the program, to the university. Um, so just kind of some tips with that. Talk with the faculty members. They have so much knowledge and can, you know, really assist with if you're interested in a certain faculty member's area. They're very always happy to, you know, talk with you and discuss different things about the business world and um, become close with your classmates. Um, even if you're in online classes, a lot of the time students are um, assigned groups. So, you know, another great way to kind of get involved and feel connected to the program is to get connected with your classmates. Um, of course, seek help if you don't understand whether that's help from your faculty member or the TA for the course with the content. And um, if there's, you know, certain degree requirements or things that you need to reach out to your advisor about. Um, definitely I would suggest seeking help sooner rather than later. Um, read your Monday weekly email. Another plug for the Monday email. This again has all the events and different announcements and things for each week. So make sure that you're um, reading over that each week to get the, the information. And we do have a current students LinkedIn group as well as the current Pemba students um, teams group. So another great way to get connected and kind of plugged into the different goings on of the program. Um, register for the MBA events, and then there are so many different student organizations that are offered through the Jindal School of Management, and so um, there's a whole long list of programs or organizations that students are involved in, so if you have the time outside of school and your other responsibilities to join a student organization, um, it's a great thing to put on your resume as well, so would highly recommend if you have the time. Just a few other resources here. Um, there are documents in the MBA handbook that are linked in the Professional MBA Important Do Academic Documents folder, which is in Box. If you, for some reason, do not have access to that folder in Box, please feel free to reach out to me. I can send the link your way. Um, be sure to review the academic calendar each semester. I know I mentioned the academic calendar um, a few slides ago, but it has all of the information that you need about registration timelines, drop deadlines, payment deadlines, and all of those things. So um, if you have questions about dates or anything like that, or when's the last date to register, things like that, that is all on the academic calendar. Um, familiarize yourself with the JSON policy page, the graduate catalog, and the manual of operating procedures. All of those things have lots of information for you to review. Always use your UT Dallas email address to correspond with any university office. And um, if you send an email from your personal email, a lot of the time the response will be, please resend this from your UT Dallas email. So just be sure that you are doing that. And then, of course, advocate for yourself. Ask questions when you don't understand. I know I mentioned this on just the previous slide, but reach out for help sooner rather than later if you need anything from faculty members, program, anything like that. Um, you are responsible for understanding and abiding by all university policies and procedures. Again, um, just because you didn't know something doesn't mean that that's an excuse for any wrongdoing. And that is the end of my presentation. So thank you all so much for um, listening in. And if you have any questions or need anything from the program, please feel free to reach out. Have a great day.